All right, everyone, welcome along. Week six extras. So what I thought we'd finish off is this conversation that's really extending all our work that we've done so far on understanding what modeling involves, what governance layers we need to apply and kind of really also where those need to be. What I really want to do is make sure that I've really landed with you the importance of actually getting your governance in place and understanding as well how the different sides of your business have to come together for success in Power BI and for a great data culture to really take root within your business, which is that transformative site that you're really looking for and frankly, why we're all here. All right, so here I am, little old me in a little picture, right? <clears throat> we need to get this and really land it and make it out like I'm not being horrible to anybody or I'm saying one thing or the other that I'm really not trying to say, right? The crux of this is around governance and getting that in the right place for your Power BI to be successful, for your data journeys to work optimally, right? What it comes down to is understanding that there are two sides to this, right? We've got a governed side that I'm saying traditionally is IT based, right? Where IT will control and govern what goes on in your infrastructure. And that's a legacy BI mindset, legacy. That's how it is pre Power BI. That's how it was a decade ago, right? That doesn't make it wrong. That's just how it is. Right? For most businesses, you will still have an IT department or IT team that manage and control like the laptops that you have, the usage of applications, the licenses. Those are the people, that's the rigor that you need for your governed layer. Okay? The other side right, is what we're called managed, right? and that's going to be the business, kind of managing, self-serving themselves, right? And that's like the nice to have, the airy fairy side, if you'd like to have it, maybe that way, if we can say it. But the nice side is what we mean, okay? You know, happy, smiley faces there, pointing at the pretty pictures. Look, pie chart, aren't I great? We're all happy, okay? Let's clap some more, yeah? The business, okay? <clears throat> right? And they want things. Oh, what's going on today? Oh, I need to know. Oh, I, you know, and it's like the whole meerkat thing, isn't it? Where, oh, what's going on? Alan, Alan, right, the video that you've got of all that, yeah? <clears throat> so if your Power BI table structure was all built the wrong that way, ooh, what's happened, yeah? You, you wouldn't get anywhere, you wouldn't have stability. And that's the key bit, that's the point, right? But equally, if your IT side managed everything and controlled everything, you wouldn't have the flexibility that would allow you to look and say, right, wait, we need to do this today. Hang on, that's happened. Do we, we need to understand what's going on there. We, we, that whole investigative side, explorative piece of your data analytics goes missing. So there's a definite balance. And the reality is that success only comes when both sides are able to work together. So we can unpick how our databases fit together. We can unpick how our files fit together, how those are structured into models how those models then become the reports that the business needs. And likewise, there's a loop back for the business to come back in and say, oh, we really need this today. Can we get it? Ooh. Right? And over time, that diminishes, okay? So that feedback, it gets smaller and smaller. It will still be, it's always there and it will always be important. And that's why when we first deploy data models, I recommend you look at maybe even a weekly update cycle for them. Then you paste that back down to a monthly, ideally then quarterly, and then if you can really get away with it, yearly, right, for updates. Because as people get more used to it, and as you bring more into it, there's less need to evolve and manage and update it. The overall cost benefit analysis is clear. And the benefit of having everybody, yeah, all together, we're all one big happy family, is very much the data culture because everybody is looking at the same data the data is trusted the insights that come out from it are then validatable you can verify them okay we can verify that 
Duncan says, this is what's happened. We can verify that Jeff did that, okay? We can understand what's going on. So how does that look in our Power BI environment that we've built for our New York City water inspections? Hmm? The answer is it works perfectly well. Okay. What we have is we end up with our data flow, uh, sorry, with our develop deployment pipeline, deployment pipeline that we've got. This is the governed layer. We are governing what happens here. The goal being that the production area, so the bit underneath my head, right, becomes pristine, protected, looked after, right? We make sure that's accurate. We do everything we can do for that. If there are changes needed to that master data model or to the master data that's there, that goes through the development environment first, okay? We triage what comes into development and we then we push it through into test, okay? As that versioning goes forward, it then at some point will be deployed into production. And that's where you get that idea of structure. So in practice, you might have ongoing development coming into deploy into your development area, an ongoing steady stream. And at periodic intervals, you'll say, right, we're gonna push that up from test into production, okay? So development work happens, it automatically just rolls up into test, into test, into test. You're gathering in your evidence of testing documentation to say, yes, we validated that this test worked or this update worked, this meets our needs, we're really happy, champion, okay? Everyone's happy. You've done that, that's that great governance layer that you needed, where you've got that peace of mind that you have to have, you can understand what's going on, and everyone can be happy. That's then counteracted, the counterpoint to all that is then that we have this area. Okay? So we've got our report area, and this is just one workspace. There's nothing to stop us having two, three, four, five, or more workspaces that different people are working in producing different reports. Ultimately, and the core piece that we need to be aware of is that what we've got behind the scenes is always the same, okay? We have this, okay? This single pane of glass reporting area, okay? One report, that's all that we've got, single report. We don't have multiples. We don't turn around and say, oh, we've got loads of stuff coming through. We've got one, so it's not one data set, sorry. So we've got one source of truth for it. We can have a hundred reports coming from there, a thousand reports coming from there, but it's one source of truth, one area of governance, one point that we have to make sure is right. Because suddenly everyone's right and everyone goes, well, this is the same. So actually, what was the crux of the argument that you're trying to make? What was the, the point of discussion? What was it that we're actually trying to say? And all that noise that you've got around data goes. And it, honestly, it does. I've seen it just goes, it's gone, right? Even better, Okay, if you get this right, bearing in mind this comes through daily, right? How many of you have your monthly meeting talking about last month? And you'll have it 10th, 13th, 14th of the month. So we're already two weeks, potentially six weeks after an issue could have happened on the beginning of the month. We're now talking about it. And you'll then collect an AOB item to bring to the next board meeting to talk about something that happened already potentially six weeks ago. So you then talk about something. 10 weeks ago that happened and there's no benefit to the business is there okay you get this right we can be notified on the first of the month or the second of the month that hey something went wrong yesterday I'm not quite sure what it was right we could be looking into it so i'm then rocking up to my board meeting still two weeks late because people think it takes two weeks right and i'm saying well this happened this happened blah 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 we know what, what it was it was this okay even better i could be proactively saying to them at the board meeting the month before Hey, some hokey's happened a couple of weeks ago at the start of this month. I know it's not the topic for today, but I think we need to be aware of it. These are the actions that we've taken. It was significant enough that I'm letting you know now, right? Or even dare I say it, you have your monthly board meeting on the second of the month. Honestly, <sighs> lunacy, right? All of that is suddenly possible once you start to piece together that these are the way to go, yeah? So 
what do you reckon? There's been a lot put here in these two, two videos, yeah, week six videos are deliberately tough, okay? A lot of this is about getting your head around the concept that governed, controlled, very locked down, rigid, is there and is beautiful and makes for a successful Power BI deployment. But that locked down, rigid piece only works and is successful and great for your Power BI environment if you then have the ability to start to build and extrapolate and bring data to your fingertips and explore that data, okay? So, if because if everything's locked down, okay, people won't use it, right? That's the point. That's why Power BI exists. That's why Tableau exists. That's why Click exists, right? You go back through, you find it out. Legacy BI solutions, even, well, not even, Microsoft's a great example. You know, they, 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 they were kind of one of the incumbents with it. SQL Server Analytics and Analysis Services, right? It was great. Slow, clunky, expensive to manage, right? But did really well when you could get it to run on time and, you know, yeah, not gonna, not gonna complain. It was great for what it was. The reality is, and this is the problem that businesses face, this is the challenge, is you would go and you would spend 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 pounds, dollars, whatever you wanna say, okay, Deutschmarks. And then the consultant, you know, hand on the door, and someone's taking data out, putting in Excel, producing new reports. What's the point? You, you know, it's not a case of it being, oh, this was 10 years ago, and some, you know, the report requirements have moved on. The person's not even out the door, and we've started to change it. So that is agility doesn't work. Because now, where we are with our Power BI environment, it means that we can have that restrictive, like it used to be, side of things, but it's accessible and people can extend that. And instead of having to say, I'm gonna download, click a, click a button, download to Excel, do me thing in Excel and produce a pivot chart that's separate and all business logic is gone from it. We can bring you into the business logic, connect to Excel if you want to, not download, connect, have your data there, okay? And suddenly everything works yeah, so have a think, all right? Let me know down below what you think, all right? Have a great weekend, stay safe, take care, ta-da. Are you still here? Shh, I've got a secret to show you. The eagle-eyed of you might have noticed that I'm not using the data mark anymore. Okay, I'll show you what happened. One of the best things, okay, about thin reports now, okay, didn't used to be the case. Used to be, you used to have to write measures to do this. Now, right, the text box functionality has been up, updated in the platform and you can now write text boxes that include lookups within them. Okay, so we've got these things here, okay. What I found was as I started to update the data model to do, to bring this stuff through and to bring the, 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 the KPI piece in, they stopped working and I couldn't update them. I couldn't write them anymore. So everything was working, like all the measures were working, which is what I obviously did all the testing on, but these text boxes stop working. And I'm not sure if it's part of the update cycle that Microsoft are going through at the moment, because they are doing something. And I know they're doing something because things keep being a bit strange, but it led me on, oh, hang on. So I pulled everything out, put it into a Power BI file, and I've saved it up for now. Okay, and we'll use that, but I will keep dipping back through and seeing if this is gonna work or not. Um, in terms of issues, 